It's time for Final Friday, June, with Creative Katie. That's me. As requested, this video is setting up an entire month in your planner. It's a big one. With step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow. Don't forget to check out the other planner videos that are listed in the description box. Lots of great ideas there. Check the description box also for links to supplies used. Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Burchill. It is the Monday of the last week in June. Friday is the 30th of June and that means a final Friday video. And so I'm getting ready to get July done. And this week, this Final Friday, what I'm going to do is attempt to set up the entire month of July with holidays and landscaping and my commitment to doing index card a day for 61 straight days. I'm just finding time is a little bit short and finding time to do a planner spread every week it was becoming a weight on my shoulders and, and I know other people feel like that at times. Um, the holidays is one of those times so what I did last time and I'll put a link to that video I did multiple weeks in one sitting and I really like that and what I discovered was that I really saved time because I did it assembly line style. I you know did all my inking, I did all my cutting, I did all my stamping at the same time for each of the weeks and you know and admittedly I made some choices to put some things that were maybe a little bit more repetitive and, um, but I'm really happy with the spreads that I got and they worked really well for what I was doing. So you know in the end it all worked out. So, and I actually had somebody that just started watching one of my, my planner videos, which by the way, you know, they're not specific to that one week. There's a lot of good ideas, especially in the earlier videos, the first eight or so videos, because I'm really giving new ideas of how to use your mixed media stash and supplies and techniques and apply it to the planner so that you don't have to go out and buy all those planner accessories. I know they're lovely, I'm tempted to, but quite honestly, I can't warrant the cost to me. Not when I have stuff that I can be using. I can make my own stickers, I can use my stencils, I can you know, maximize the materials that I have already. And I don't think my spreads are, um, you know, suffering in any way, shape, or form. I, I like them. I like the selection of the color theme. I always pick a color theme, uh, so I kind of focus myself a color, color and or theme. Sometimes I've like done flowers, or sometimes I've done whatever. And I'm not going to do that, but I am going to pick the color. And this month, it is blue, 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 right? The very kind of baby bluish. So. What I'm going to do first is I went through my file folder, my big blue box file system, where I keep all my jelly prints and colored papers and braided papers and bits and pieces of everything. And so I went through this and pulled out ones that went with the page. So I opened my page and I just kept pulling out ones that in one way, shape, or form are going to fit my theme. Okay, because I know I'm going to use my jelly prints to either cover a whole day or the weekend or just to divide up um, in between. But and I grabbed those as well. I have a whole assortment of ATCs. Some, like these ones, are pretty much done. And I pulled out anything that kind of went with the blue. Because I'm hoping to save time that I'm going to start, at least start with one side, pretty much done. 
So I pulled out those and we'll see where that takes us. So that, that was these guys. Then I have some that are partially decorated and then I have a whole lot that are just pattern papers. They're, they're color, there's pattern, there's, I've glued jelly prints on them and they may go. So I may use that. I may use some of these lovely paper jelly prints to put on the back of, of one of these. And then I'll have my double-sided ATC. I'm gonna try to keep going with that because I really, like I said, I really like this little book. And um, this one's getting full. And I think what I'm gonna do is start another one. You know, and I think these, these will make perfect little gifts. I've, I've punched them with my arc punch and I put them in there. These would be, you know, this would be a beautiful gift to ship, to send to somebody and they'd have a little inspirational quote book. I also went through my colored sticker collection and pulled out anything that may fit. Now, you know, some of these I want to see if I can add color onto and add more. I've got some homemade stickers here and that I will put a link that's one of my earlier planner videos I showed how to make your own designer stickers using just acrylic paint or um, gold so, so I'm going to repurpose this hello July page and if you've seen other videos you'll know that I repurpose this as a gratitude page it could also be a brainstorming page where you brainstorm all the things that you're going to do that month or your goals or whatever but I find I have way more use for it as a gratitude page than what they have in it. So basically just treating it like a paper and covering it up. I love using the dilutions paints here. They blend so easily. They're not overly wet. They dry quickly and you can get so much visual texture with them using a stencil as you'll see in a bit. This is the probably one of the first times that I've used white. I saw a lot of videos with people using white and I thought oh I gotta try that but I haven't really done it so just wanted to bring get a little bit more variation in the blue I guess with that with the dilutions you need to dry in between and then layer up and then it blends smoothly this is a dollar store stencil that I bought because you know I it was a dollar and I had to have it but I have never used it so as part of you know hashtag use your stash 2017 and that's one of my goals in doing the planners to use stuff that I am not using but I can tell you after using it on this and seeing the effects that I get I will definitely be using this stencil again and I will put a link will find a similar stencil on Amazon and put a link to it if you're interested in having a stencil with this effect. Um, you can always check out your dollar store too and I'll put other links to other products um, specifically stencils and, and paints and stuff if you're interested. So I'm just going over same stencil moving it around with all three colors that I've used and I love this process. You get so much visual texture. I could have kept going and layering this, you know, use the dark blue again, use the white again, and you would just get even more loveliness. I just absolutely love this. And I definitely will be using this stencil, these colors, on an art journal page or on a canvas because I absolutely love it. So dig up those stencils that you have never tried. You may be surprised. Now this is a Dina Wakeley stencil, it's Grunge Hearts, and I chose it because only the part where the hearts are will be black. The rest will all stay this lovely blue textured, visual texture yumminess that we created. And I didn't want to lose too much of this background because I really did love it so I flipped all the way through my stencils and found this one this is another stencil that I have not used very much interestingly enough I noticed after the fact it wasn't part of my decision making but it, the grunge heart kind of really goes well with the crackle stencil 
they both have that ragged edge look to them. Isn't that yummy? So then I just take my Uniball Signo, my white, after edging this with black, and I'm just going to outline those hearts. Just add a little bit more white, and you'll see this at the end. I'm not going to video my whole process. Normally I would leave this and then when I'm watching TV then I get out my pens and I doodle. So you have the paint, you have the stencils, you have everything so get it out and use up that paint. Use up, you know, go with it and, and stencil stuff on, use up the paint. I, I used more paint but I had everything there so this saves time in the end because you won't have to dig out all these things. You won't have to clean the, the applicators a second time. So I'm doing some of these stickers, these um, labels, and just whatever stencils are within my reach. I'm not grabbing anything else. It's a good idea to have blank label sheets or even the label sheets that have some color or jelly prints or colored paper close, close at hand. And then whenever you have whatever kind of medium extra, you can just have a place to put it and then you can use it. I'm not really thinking too much about what I'm doing here. I'm just adding color. I'm just getting it done. I and I you know it's surprising when you give way to just letting go like that. It's amazing the things you come up with. This these labels I were kind of a mistake and I decided, "Oh, you know what? I can't use them as they are. I'm just going to put some bl some blue on here." And I put the stencil one way and I put the stencil the other way and I put a, and I end up using this on one of the weak spreads, and I absolutely love it. It's just gorgeous now. So I'm continuing on doing more of this with more stencils because I figure I have all the paint. Everything's out. Some of these stickers I can use in my art journal pages with my iCADs, with ATCs that aren't even planner related. And I'm going to put a link to the video where I talk about um, how I keep all these colored papers organized. Because that's half the battle too. You can have all of them, but you need to um, be able to find them when you want them. So now I'm just grabbing the, the deli, jelly prints that I had pulled out and adding more blue. Some of these I do end up using, some of them I don't, but you know what? I've improved them, I've added another layer, and you will see them on some upcoming video, I'm sure of that. This was brayered paper, and I'll put a link to that technique tag video where I show how to brayer paper. To get colored paper and it's a good alternative if you don't have a jelly plate and even if you do. So I love this tiny dot stencil from Crafters Workshop. It is absolutely lovely and I use it on the monthly spread. So since July 1st Canada Day and July 4th is in this month I thought oh I'm going to make banners. Just change it up a little bit. Right across the top only the uh, Sunday has has uh, an actual date. So I thought I'm just going to put color here. And that's really my only goal on this page. I don't use the, the monthly spread so very much, but I do keep track of, you know, mundane things like garbage pickup and recycling, when we can take garden waste to the, to the, to the um, city hall and stuff. And I put birthdays and other ev events there, but it's not something I honestly turn to a lot. What do you use this place, this page for? Do you use it? Leave a comment below.
So right there in that square, I used a coffee filter that I had some of the color on it. And that is my sister-in-law's birthday. And I am going to stamp with purple metallic a flower stamp that I have. Um, because for her and I, that's we talk gardens and flowers and, and a lot. So I just wanted to remember her. So this is my Stabilo All Pencil, and it's a blue one. They come in other colors. I've got blue and white and black. They come in brown and green as well. I'm not sure if any more colors. And I just wanted to see if I could get a watercolor effect, kind of it, having it bleed away from, from you know, where it was. And eh, it's okay. It's, it's not my favorite, and it's probably not something that I'm going to try again not enough bang for my buck but you know what live and learn just writing in a few a few important dates and just labeling things just with my pen or gel pens I love the, the Secura Jelly Roll pans. They work so well. I've got the metallic set, and I absolutely love them. Use the little faux stitching for detailing. And you know what? Leftover paint. I'm going to take this purple paint that I have and it's going to go on some more assorted things. Coffee filters and color papers that I've already created. Um, just adding another layer of interest. And I splattered on there. So now for the weekly spreads. So the first thing I do is I select a jelly print as the forerunner for each, each week. So I've got four different jelly prints. And then I'm picking out uh, some of the half done or completely done ATCs that match that color and matching it to any stickers that I have already created. So once I kind of have that done, I'm getting out my paper cutter and I'm just going to cut the strips that are going to divide the areas. Now I'm dividing this horizontally, but you could also divide up, mark off the weekends or whatever you want it. You can even take this and divide up one of the areas into two sections if that is what you need. And I'm also cutting an ATC background with each of the jelly prints that I use with that. And I, I like how that all works together. And again, when I'm looking at the ATCs, I'm going fairly quickly, not as quickly as this uh, six or eight times sped up quick, but I'm trying not to overthink it. You know, what looks good, what looks good? And I'm not trying to get too much in my head. So I'm just putting everything that goes with each week together. You know, I'm selecting, okay, I want these stickers and this jelly print or whatever. And I'm just kind of putting things together. Remember, one of my goals is to use stuff in my stash. And it's surprising how much stuff you really have that does go together. You don't need to go and buy more stuff. So when I'm cutting the dividers, I usually put a strip of color of the jelly print or color paper or what have you at the bottom and I cut that one a little wider just because some of the times I like to put a quote there I'm big into inspirational quotes so there I'm trying to find a matching coordinating ATC 
putting it all together and off to the side. Next week, now I'm going to use these stickers and I, you know, I decide, you know, now's the time. But I didn't realize that I, if I use them wide like that, I won't have enough. So right about now I decide, oops, I need to cut them so I'm peeling them off and <laughs> redoing it. I could have edited this out, but I thought you guys deserved a giggle. Fortunately, they, the stickers aren't too terribly sticky. So if you really are short on time, you know, minimum, you can have colored papers, cut it out, you know, use stickers. They're very quick. You don't have to even cut a whole lot. You can just peel and stick. You could just end it with that. Have a little color on your page just for a little more inspiration and be good to go. But there's lots here that, you know, I'm showing you all the possible options that you can do. Well, not all the possible options, some of the possible options. I'm using gel medium to stick this down. This page, this page paper is a little thicker. Now at the top I have these sectioned off and there are four punches for each day of the week and that's my water tracker. There are four holes, each one stands for two cups of water. And I'm going to do this periodically. I'm not going to do it every week. You know, I might skip a week here or there, but I think because I, if it's there all the time, I find I don't use it. This way I kind of follow it. So just like I went and I cut everything out, I selected everything, cut everything out, now I'm gluing everything down. I'm gluing the ATC background onto the existing ATC. I'm putting something in the corner where the uh, calendar is because I don't really ever refer to it, so I use that as an opportunity to put some more color or decoration or embellishment. And I found another sticker that just so, you know, had that kind of bright blue and a little bit of that... Um, violet that's in it so it was a, again a perfect match never ceases to amaze me so these are instead of trackers these are just bullets just using it like a bullet for lists and stuff the top one is my to do my the middle one is kind of planning my videos and the like and the bottom one right now I'm using for the in index card a day challenge I write the prompts in and then I brainstorm um, in each section all the different ideas the things that come to my mind when I hear that prompt so here's that lovely sticker that was ready to go to the garbage and I reclaimed it by putting another coat of paint on it I love using my own jelly prints it's, it makes it so personalized no one ever is going to have one just like you and I don't need to have a whole extra stash of washi tape or other things and I can always have my custom colors no matter what so these stickers are um, they're kind of clear and they're a little hard to hole punch, but if you put a paper underneath, it makes it easier for, to get a clean cut. I wish you could see how lovely they, they look. They just look really, really quite special. I contemplated using the uh, leftovers of the hole punch you can see at the top of the screen there um, as bullets I just didn't have the patience to to do that and I'm going to for the um, one where I use the sticker with the cracked um, stencil I'm using the coffee filter 
with the same colors for the ATC. I kind of forgot about that one since it wasn't a jelly print. So now I am going to punch, get a, punch these out because I take these ATCs and after they're in my planner, I take them out and they go into a three disc little flip book. And I love that actually. I have one already all full, filled and I'm starting on the second one. And these would make just perfectly lovely gifts, little inspirational gift. So there you see me, I'm taking a dollar store sticker, that little fairy, and I'm cutting off, it, it has a lot of white around it and there's a lot of a lot of other stuff and I just want it to be a little smaller. So, you know, you don't have to use the stickers as they are, you can adjust them. So now I have all the ATCs out and basically I'm additioning different pieces, bits and bobs that I have in my stash with the backgrounds and you know with the sayings I have a stash of those as well um, so it's just a matter of matching everything to everything now this is a, you know you do not have to do the ATCs it is a way of bringing mixed media into my planner and decorating it um, but you could just allocate a couple of these squares you know anywhere on your planner that you basically design and decorate that so it's like an ATC in the planner I just wanted I figure if I'm doing the work for it I just thought it'd be nice to be able to take it out so this is the edge of a paper pad and I kept them and you know I've never used it but today I decided to there, on this jelly print, there are some horizontal and vertical lines going every which way. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to start layering up. I don't do a whole lot of layering. Um, so I thought, oh, I'm going to definitely give that a try. And that is a jelly print flower. And one of the planner videos has um, where I show how to cut those flowers. And I had a deli paper sentiment there. So I had this iCAD with the swirls, my one of my favorite stencils, this little swirl that I think was one of my first ones, and I still love it, but it had it with gel medium, and I'm getting out my ink a gold. Well, I haven't opened my ink a gold probably in two years. It was something I absolutely had to have and never really used. So I did the one in blue on the card and I thought, okay, I have this swirl that was the leftover part, the discard part of um, a stencil that I cut with my silhouette. And I have a whole bunch of those. So I paint, end up painting it silver and putting it on top. And I absolutely love that. It just goes so well together. And then I had this watercolor butterfly embellishment that I created. I think I made a dozen of them and you know I think I have about four left and one of my quotes that I have printed out on stick, sticker paper. These stars another thing a discard that I cut with my silhouette that just ended up in my stash so when I say that all these things were lying around they were And I, I, you get kind of the starburst line, there's lines behind on that jelly print, and that's why I picked the stars for that. I have a quote there. I don't end up using it. It does, there's a, too many words for an ATC. Probably would fit an iCAD. Getting out my jelly roll pan, adding some of this purple violet color that's already in the jelly print. Just kind of work with the colors and the textures and the patterns that are there and build them. I have these little poofy stars and arrows and hearts and I'm using those. I got those at the dollar store. But again, I bought them and they've been sitting in my stash for two years. No more. If I use them all up, I get to go buy some more if I need to or if I want to. Add a little bling bling on that. 
And this one, I here's a little ballerina. Again, this was a cut file on my silhouette, and I cut it out, and it's, it's just in the stash waiting to be used. I didn't use it for what I had planned on. And, you know, I really like how that looks right now, but I went a different way, playing around with different sentiments that I have there. Ended up going with a stamp that says, Choose Joy. And that was just a $1.50 bin at Michael's. Edging them and just gluing the little girl, the girl ballerina down. And again, since I'm edging one, I might as well edge all of them. I've got the paint out and they're all getting that Prussian blue which if you don't have in your in your color palette, you should. It is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous color. It didn't stamp quite as dark and as bold as I want, so I'm just going over it. I thinned the acrylic paint, and I'm just using a liner pen, a liner brush to do that. Doing a little bit of splatters on all of them with the Prussian Blue. Use the Sibilo All Pencil. I think I tried Charcoal Pencil. Never like it enough. So I end up going to the Sibilo with a black, in black and just activating it with water. And I apologize that this is a little bit out of range here. I, I zoom in so that you can see a little more detail and then sometimes I forget when I get into the whole creating thing. So it really is assembly line. You know, I have the Stabilo, I grab this one's going to get Stabilo, this one's going to get Stabilo, this one's going to get it, and it's just, you go through each and every one. So while this, you know, all told, probably took about three hours, it would take more than that if I had to do it all separately. By the time cleanup time or whatever, anytime I do a, a week spread, it just seems like, you know, my studio seemed to have thrown up. I'm really not happy with the ballerina I kept, or ATC, but I'm not sure what I want to do to correct it. And I'm just taking that sticker and I'm just kind of outlining, outlining parts of it just to make it stand out a little more. And that's another thing you can do. Remember, the stickers do not have to end up exactly the way you buy them. You can alter them. So I splattered, and I didn't like the splatter, so I take my gel pen and the blue and write it around it. And Yeah, that's okay, but, you know, I still don't like it. Night fell. The next day show came. And I decide that, you know, I'm going to paint her that light blue color. And after a couple coats of that paint, I, I did like it better. So now I could leave my weekly spreads as they are. But I decide I'm just going to show you the option of using inks to stencil on some color. Now I like using inks because you can still write on it really easily with any kind of pen. So here I'm using the Crackle stencil to go with the um, ATC background and the sticker tape that I used. And I just masked off where I didn't want to get that. So the next page that I picked up on this burgundy and I found another cut flower, the same paper that I have on the ATC. And there's burgundy in the jelly print, so I'm just really bringing that out. And I grab my flower, little flower stamp, and I'm just making that as a bullet. It's adding color, and it's going to be three bullets on that section. Now I have a flower theme, and I decide, you know what, I'm going to use this archival ink, and I'm just going to put a little more color here. So it really seemed like I had burgundy and blue on this page and flowers. 
do a little faux stitching around things. Now it looks good on here. I'm liking how the white looks. So oh, I go back to the ATC and add that. Makes a big difference. I loved how it looked at the end. And on this page, I'm getting some stickers that I have that, you know, kind of match the colors. And they're shiny, and so I don't like using them on my art journal pages or my ATCs, but, you know, this is a perfect place to use them. And I'm gluing a sentiment down at the bottom after I edge it with some blue paint, and I'm giving some more bullets here. I have the stamp out, might as well. And the last page, this ATC you did not see because my battery died. And so I ended up creating it because I needed to get this done. And I have a little swirl pattern here and I'm using my blue or navy archival and using some hearts because I have a heart in the corner. little gold edging. Now I wasn't happy with this month spread and since I had the inks out I thought you know what and I thought okay I'm going to use this starburst or sunburst stencil of Tim Holtz. I absolutely love that. I'm going to try that on a jet page as well. So now we are done. July is good to go just the planning stage. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through here is my gratitude page and I absolutely love this. I have an idea for an art journal page or a canvas using some of the things that I discovered for this. And I'll just take my Utable Signal or just even a, just a regular pen and I write in between the spaces things that I'm grateful for. So as I'm sitting there and planning my next day, I, I take time to do that. And I really like that routine. And it's nice to have it in with my planner all together. So here is the month spread and this Tim Holtz sunburst or starburst stencil is absolutely to die for. And again I have an idea of using that on a spread with something in the middle similar to that. So you know I may not have come up with these ideas if I wasn't for doing it in the planner. You know, inspiration exists, but it's got to find you working. So week one with the crackle that matches this on the sticker and on the background of this I, or ATC. It just looks very clean and bright. Here I really played up the flowers that seem to be a theme and the burgundy. So while the theme is blue, each one's just that little bit different. I think this might be my favorite ATC right there with the, with the flower and the heart and the um, scrap from the edges of um, a notepad or something. So those little stamps a good idea if you have little stamps, little stars, little hearts, little, little, little something, put them all in one container and then you have them at the ready when you need them for your planner. Again, nice colors. Here we've added gold. So if you've watched some of me, my other videos, that, thank you very much. If you haven't, you might want to go and watch some of them, especially the first eight to ten. There are some new ideas of how to use mixed media techniques and your stash to create original, creative, personalized planner spreads. And... They're not specific to one week. 
So I'm just going to let say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next Final Friday at the end of August. I cannot believe that it is almost July. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.